Howdy folks, this is Murray with 3 bar Videos and today I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to Russian side mount optics. So this is going to be a fairly long video because there's a lot of topics I need to cover. So in order to keep this video very organized, I'm going to split it up into multiple sections. These sections will be available down the timeline for the video as well as in the description box. So if there's a particular thing you need to know about, you can just go down there, find a little time link to it, and it'll rocket you forward to that part in the video. So the first thing I'm going to point out is this video is not going to be about me reviewing the various optics I own here, but rather about the concept of the whole system and its various designs. Alrighty, so the first topic I'm going to go over is a little bit of disclosure here. Um, I was once new to this concept as well, and I remember from those days that uh, the system, this optic system, comes off as very foreign to a lot of people, and that's because it very much is a thing uh, that was developed in the Eastern European countries, and of course that makes it very foreign to a lot of us North Americans and other countries that might be into this type of thing. Uh, and on top of that, that brings in a language barrier. You know, translating the languages of those countries to English for us to understand the various things about these optics. The concept is very different from a lot of traditional Western ways. There are definitely some side mount optic systems out there in Western culture, like the M14 series, and fields, and, and various things like that. But the way this works is still very different from uh, what you see in Western guns. So as you can see on the table here, I have quite a few different examples of the various designs in this platform. And unfortunately, because I'm Canadian here, the two most notable rifle platforms that use, utilize this optic system are banned here in Canada. And that is the SVD platform and the AK platform rifles. Thankfully though, we do have Airsoft as a sport here in Canada. And I am very lucky to have two Airsoft rifles here that fairly accurately represent their real life counterparts. So I will be able to use them to uh, demonstrate these optics to you. And then the final thing I'll mention is that I know expert on this system still. I know a heck of a lot more about it today than I did six years ago when I first got into it. But um, there is a chance that today I'll still mention some things that are actually incorrect or I got slightly off. So keep that in mind but hopefully the information I present to you in this video will be enough to get you started and purchase the right things to get your op your rifle set up with one of these systems all right so next topic I'm going to go over is the concept of the overall system now I'm not going to go too much into the history of this just because this is kind of more of a how-to beginner's guide video rather than a history lesson. But I will say that the Russian side mount system, if you include things like the most in the gaunt, the little side mounted P PU thing, it's been pretty much around since the beginning of the 1900s. And it's still in service to this day in a lot of cases. As you can clearly tell, the concept is mainly an optic that's mounted to a rifle by the side of the firearms receiver. And the reason why you would do such a thing is because of numerous reasons. Um, the biggest one probably is because, as you can tell by a lot of Soviet and uh, uh, Russian firearms, they tend to have a removable dust cover on the top. So of course, by having that feature on the gun, it makes it a little hard to incorporate an optic to that or an optic rail. So you mount it to the side of the receiver to get overcome that. Another benefit of mounting to the side of the firearms receiver is in a lot of cases, it retains the use of the iron sights on the firearm because they're no longer obstructed by the mounts to mount the optic to the top. Um, most of these designs you're gonna see incorporate while they're at it, a little quick detached lever. 
Um, so that allows the user of the system to, if the optic's damaged or for whatever reason, to just simply unclamp the, the little lever here and slide the optic off the gun. And then they can run the gun without it or they can slide a different optic onto it in a short amount of time. And if the optic's already zeroed, then they're back in business. There are quite a few different manufacturers of optics like this that have been around over the years, but uh, generally you're gonna come across two on the market. And the, the two manufacturers are MPZ and Belimo. MPZ is the genuine Russian manufacturer of the, this system. They've been at it, I think, since like 1906 or something like that. They've been doing it for a long time and they are the ones responsible for introducing the famous PSO sniper scope you saw that came with the Drognov rifles back when they were introduced. Um, and they generally are the manufacturers of all the optics that the Russian military uses. And they're still producing optics to this day for both military and civilian use. Uh, and then the other big manufacturer is Belimo. Belimo has been at not quite as long as MPZ. Uh, I think they started like in the mid 1900s or something like that. And they are based out Belarus. So they're not exactly Russian. And they make the same kind of things that MPZ does. But generally their, their optics aren't, I don't believe really any of them are issued to the Russian military. I might be wrong about that. But they produce a lot of optics for civilians. They're very famous for their POSP models, which we'll get into later. And they do make some variants that are used by other militaries like Venezuela and, and stuff like that. This system was originally designed, I believe, purely for military use, but then of course it quickly got incorporated into the civilian market. So this is the system is a military grade concept and the Russians have been using it on their guns for darn near a hundred years. So you can be assured that the system works, it's sound. Um, and it's only as of, as of till late that they've started doing a little bit of a transition to the Western concept, the Western way of things and mounting the optics to the top of their guns. Alrighty, so the next topic I'll go over here is terminology. And a lot of the terms I'm gonna say here aren't sound, like they aren't, there isn't really bona fide, genuine terms for a lot of these things. It's, you hear there's different words for the same thing. So the first thing I'll go over is, what do you call this whole system as a whole? Um, a lot of people say Russian side mount. Some people just say side mount. Some people say Soviet side mount. Um, whatever definition you use is fine. They ultimately kind of get the same message across. Um, for this video, you'll probably hear me call it um, just a side mount or Russian side mount system. Um, some people, you'll say, you'll read online, just refer to it as POSP, which we'll get into in a little moment. But that's kind of, that's very misleading because POSP is actually a particular model line in this system. It isn't, it's kind of, I talked to an Eastern European guy about that and he mentioned that people use that term kind of as slang for the system. It's like calling a, a skid steer a bobcat, you know. It gets the message across, but genuinely, it isn't exactly right. Same thing there. So, Russian side mount system. There's different components that really, and, and you need to know what they're talking about when they mention them. Um, the first thing we'll go off is the side rail. So, generally when people say side rail, I like to think that means the actual rail that's on the side of your firearms receiver. The next thing you need to know about is the base or the mount, or I would even think clamp is an appropriate term for it. That is the bottom portion of your side mount or your optic that is responsible for clamping to your rail, the side rail on the gun. And there's different forms of this, which we'll get versions of this, which we'll get into. Some optics have this permanently attached to the rest of the, as one monolithic piece, so you can't switch it out. Another section that I don't really think is, there's really a term for it, but I'm gonna put it in here just for the sake of this video, is the arm. That is the thing that reaches around, up the side of the firearms receiver and attaches, kind of attaches the optic to the mount, or the, the rail you might have up there. And then finally you got your optic, which is 
the very top portion. Now, there are some model names out there you'll definitely see on the internet. Um, the first one, the most popular one, is POSP. POSP, as far as I've researched, basically is a model line that Belimo produces. They tend to be um, very diverse in their, their model selections, like there's AK versions, SVD versions, different reticles, different zooms, different di ones with diopters so you can focus them, ones that don't. PO is typically an optic that I would like to say you see come from MPZ. So that's the more authentic uh, Russian manufacturer that I mentioned earlier. PO, uh, I like to think is basically the term they give to their civilianized product lineup of optics. So like if they make a three to nine scope, which you'll see on my SKS later here, they call it a PO three to nine. And I'm sure those, those letters are probably acronyms for something in Russian that makes a lot more sense, but because I don't speak Russian and I haven't really found the definitions of it, uh, I'm not gonna elaborate on that. But I have recently researched and found out that PO isn't exclusive to MPZ. You will see Belimo produces some optics that start with PO as well. And they are even military issue. They make a PO three to five by 41 or something like that. That's a really nice military grade optic that I think the Venezuelans use on their AKs. And then finally, the one that a lot of people probably hear online and it's kind of like the coveted design or model and that is the PSO. That's the one that's very much associated with the Drognov rifle. It's the original side mount optic scope that MPZ produced for the Drognov platform of rifles and its variants. Uh, it's, a, it's very much considered I think to be typically a military grade optic and one could maybe argue that it's the highest grade of all the side mount optics out there in terms of quality fit and finish and all that but I, I don't know I would say maybe the PO models offered by MPZ are probably they look pretty much the same to me so I'm like let's see if this is the one All right, so now we get into probably the most important part of the video, and it has the most questions, usually, and that is compatibility, because as you can tell, there's a lot of different shapes and sizes of these things, different rails, all that type of stuff. So I'm gonna try and elaborate on all that for you. So the probably the biggest dictator of compatibility for this, this optic system is the side rail, the thing that is on the side of your firearms receiver. Um, so I got the two most common platforms here, an SVD and an AK-74, AK rifle basically. Um, so I'll show you the differences between them and stuff and the optics that attach to them. So how the rail dictates its compatibility is mainly because of one feature that each one of these optics has to have built into its design and that is a recoil stopper. Because as you can imagine, um, these optics clamp, they slide over these dovetail mount, these dovetail shaped receivers, and then they pinch onto them. Just like your standard Western optic pinches onto a Weaver rail or a 1913 rail. Same concept. Like the Weaver and the 1913 rails that we're used to in Western culture here, there's always a lug somewhere on that system that butts up to one of the slots in the rail, right? Well, the Russian side mount optics have to have that as well to keep the optic from sliding forward under the gun's recoil because, of course, basic laws of physics, the gun's going to recoil backwards and the inertia of the optic is going to want to stay put, generally, in relative to the earth. So when the gun recoils, it's going to want to slide forward, not backwards, but forward. So all these optics, somewhere on them, will have a recoil stopper based on some of them will have it on the back like you see on this PKA universal 
base optic that I have here. There's a recoil stopper on the back on your classic SVD type. The recoil stopper is on the front. Some mounts, like this Rackers optic here, has it on the back and other ones use a cam in the middle. Generally, the rails all kind of have the same width to them. They're all just a little over half an inch in uh, thickness. So generally, in theory, all these common clamping uh, side mount optics that you get should have the capacity with some adjustments. They all have the ability to be adjusted, which we'll get on into later. They all should have the ability to clamp onto your rail, the side rail. But the big question is whether or not your rail accommodates the locking lug setup that's on your optic. So how I'm going to go over that is I'm going to go over the two different versions that you often hear listed online. That is the SVD type and the AK type. And then I forgot a third one, the third one's universal. So here is a perfect example of a SVD rail. You will see that it has this hollow channel down the middle of it and then a, a flat surface on the front. That flat surface is the part that butts up to that front post that I showed you on the SVD mount optic. So, as you can see here, you slide this rail on and because it has that channel down the middle of it, that allows, it's always a little hard to do this in videos, but that allows, there we go. That allows it to travel all the way up the length of the rail and then you can see it stops at the front there. And then you can of course proceed to clamp it in place. Now, if I, on an AK rail, you can see your typical AK rail does not have that channel. Therefore, that means that you cannot use an SVD type mount or base on an AK rail simply because it doesn't have that channel. So therefore you can't even get started onto the rail. Some people think, oh, well, you could slide it on from the front like this. And yes, you may be able to do that. But now that lug is on the front of the rail and it's no longer doing its job. It's not holding the optic in place against the recoil forces and it will potentially slide forward and eventually not hold zero. Then they make these things called universal uh, side mount or universal mounts or bases. You see that quite often. The concept behind this is they usually lock at the rear. So you can see pretty much every mount out there is going to have a solid flat back edge to it which means if you make it so it locks back there, um, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, diverse. It can see, you can see this PKA optic is a, has a universal base on it and you can, or mount, and it can uh, slide onto the AK rail and even, uh, and if I had the clamp adjusted right, it would clamp on there for the most part. And you can see it also does it on the SVD, or it would, but of course I am running into the issue that I have these optics all adjusted to fit per certain rifles. And because of the deviances in the rails, ever so slightly, like thousandths of an inch, uh, they don't necessarily just hop over to the next gun perfectly. Here's another form. Here's another form of universal mount. This one's kind of interesting because it has this really elaborate cam looking system, locking system. And it also has a backstop on. Sounds like some of these, some of these cam universal mounts, um, they don't have the backstopper on it, so they rely on this cam indexing with the slot, this concave slot you see on the AK rail. They, it locks in there. That's the recoil lug right there. So you can see this one obviously fits perfectly because it's what I run on my AK airsoft gun here. It just slides on. That cam lines up perfectly with that locking, that concave piece, and then it clamps right on. But then it has the added benefit that it also stops at the back. I don't know why they did that on this Rackers mount, but they did. Um, you can see now 
that the SVD side rail also has that cam. Now I've never tried this before, but in theory, that should allow this rackers mount. And it might not because it's, yeah, it's, it's the slack. Oh yeah, it did. It's tight though. Like that issue I mentioned earlier. I'm not gonna force it because I don't wanna scar this stuff up. But you can see, generally, that cam once again lines up with that slot there, that concave thing. So in theory, if I adjusted this, it would slide onto the SVD mount and equip to the, the gun. Now the second factor that dictates compatibility between the optics is the arm. Because as you can probably tell, various Comblock rifles have different rail positions in relative to the receiver and different receiver thicknesses or heights. So you can see the AK is one of the chunkiest guns out there when it comes to receiver height. Um, but then you get things like a, a AS Val or an SVD or even a VZ58, they have really skinny, like low profile receivers. So some guns uh, can mount certain optics and other ones can't because of that. A good example is your good old SVD mount. You can see here that's tailored, the arm on it is tailored to situate the optic very, as low as possible to the gun and just enough over the and over the receiver enough to just allow enough gap to see your irons and to uh, remove the dust cover. Because the SPD mount or the SPD is a smaller or lower receiver that means that this optic absolutely cannot physically fit on your AK because not only be because of that whole locking lug issue I was mentioning but also simply because the arm isn't high enough. The you can see here that not only does the objective hit, but the bulb, the illumination, like the compartment in the bomb for the illumination bulb, simply uh, would hit the dust cover. So it simply does not work. That's why the, the one other mount that you don't see here on the table exists. And it's a very common one you see online called the AK mount. And what it will be is it will be basically a clamp, a bomb base thing that is very big and boxy and in shape it's basically it functions like a universal mount it index it locks at the rear of the rails and it squeezes onto them but the big difference is is it has wings that extend the optic further forward and up higher and that gives you the offset you need to comfortably mount your man your POSP your magnified optic onto your AK and not have it hit all this stuff I don't have that mount here today but that is the other dictating factor. Generally, an AK optic, with the arm set up for an AK, will fit. It's downwards compatible to smaller guns like a VZ, uh, Type 81, SVDs, things like that, because obviously they, they're smaller, so they, it's definitely not going to hit. But the con of that is now you got this, you got this um, unnecessarily tall and forward offset offsetted optic on a gun that doesn't require it. So you can take an AK POSP and mount it to your Drognov, but there's a good chance that your cheek weld's gonna be not nearly as good as the actual dedicated Drognov optic. And it's gonna it's gonna be sitting higher than necessary and maybe even further forward than necessary. So you're gonna have issues like that. All right, so now I've swapped things out here a little bit and I brought in some proprietary systems, things that are a little bit more relevant to Canadians, people that don't have the common textbook example, AK and Drognov rifles. Because um, this is where you're going off of uh, different manufactured designs and the compatibility starts to become very confusing. So here you can see I got a Type 81 SA and I got my beloved uh, SKS rifle that I've heavily modified. Um, you can see they both have the Russian side rail on them. They both are the same kind of dovetail concept, roughly the same width, but they're two different types of mounts. And you, so I'll show you how, judging by this mount, you can clearly see, or this rail, you can clearly see the locking lug at the front there. That allows it to work with SVD mounts and it has the channel, right? So here's the SVD optic made by MPZ. And you can see it just slides on there no problem. And because the SKS and the way I got this design, uh, it's a low enough receiver, of course it fits perfectly, where this one didn't fit with the AK. 
And because it has this back edge here on the rail, it will accept a universal mount as well. Once again, I'm running into that rail adjustment issue, but you guys get the concept. But anyways, it would clamp on there too, it would hit the back because it's a low receiver design once again. It fits without interference, the arm is compatible. Now here's where things become uncompatible. If you get an optic like this with that cam system, which, you know, like I said, is by definition called the universal mount, but then I would also call this an AK mount too sometimes, because um, it really was tailored to fit the AK because you saw that groove, right? That concave thing. You do not see that concave feature in this rail, right? So as you can imagine, that this, even though it might slide onto the dovetail, and the height, the arm height is perfect, you can see, and it indexes at the rear, because it's got the rear thing. It simply will not work, because that cam hits that edge of the, the bottom rail. Now, I could modify this rail, grind, machine a nice little concave in the right spot, and make it work. But, why bother when it uses a different optic? But that's the type of compatibility issues you're going to run across buying these types of things. You need to understand that you can't just go off of definitions that you read on the internet. You have to physically look at the, the optic and look at a picture that clearly displays the clamping mechanism on the bottom and then you need to look at the rail you have and make sure, and make sure that locking lug stuff all works out and that the arm's the right thing. So here I brought in my PKS optic. This one you can see is the arm's very different. It doesn't extend into the receiver at all. It very much sits exactly on the side of your gun. So it's left left hand offset is huge. Um, you can see though, it has a stopper at the back. So it will work on a lot of guns. Now it's loose on this, but yeah, the clamp there. It'll also work on this. It fits nicer on that. So I brought back the AK here to show you that because because of the arm design on this, it can work on an AK as well, no problem. It's diverse with all receiver heights because of that. The compromise being this the huge left hand offset. So the final compat compatibility thing I could touch on here that isn't very critical because it doesn't really dictate what optic attaches to which gun, but generally a lot of these side mount optics are going to be have reticles tailored to fit a certain uh, ballistic pattern. So I'll, pretty much I'd say a vast majority of the POSPs and the PSOs and the PO optics that you come across, um, they're the full length magnified optics, um, they're going to be set up to uh, set up to accommodate uh, 762 by 54R ballistics. So the, the reticle inside is going to have chevrons for 54R, the turrets that have the the distance things in them for meters uh, is going to be tailored for 54R. There are some variants that you'll see listed on the websites um, that specifically say uh, Simonov reticle is usually what they refer to. Simonov reticle Maybe they'll say like AK reticle or something like that, but you gotta watch out because a lot of the manufacturers might mislabel their product and say AK scope. And that what they're saying there doesn't mean that the reticle is for the AK, it just means that they put that AK base on it that I was telling you about. But the Simonov reticle, I have one mounted to my VZ58, which I didn't bring out here today. And it's reticle is built for, the chevrons are built for 762 by 39 and the BDC turret on the top, I think, is also for 762 by 39 Of course, you do have a lot of other very generic side mount optics like red dots, 
and simple reticled things like this Wreckers mount that just got a chevron or a dot or in the PKA's case, just multiple circles. Um, obviously by the design of those reticles, they're very generic. They work for all calibers. Um, and then you will find not so much up here in Canada because we don't have access to guns that chamber the, what is it? 545 by 39 or something. Um, you will find a lot of the more modern side mount optics got reticles tailored for that because that's obviously what a lot of the so or a lot of the Russian troops are using a lot of other militaries they're using the 545 AKs and therefore of course they get they get an optic that has chevrons for that all right so now I'll go over some features and more concepts behind these optics um, magnification wise you can, just like their western counterparts you can get these optics in all sorts of magnifications there's uh, variable powers and fixed powers um, the same goes for objective lenses um, they also come in various um, different configurations in terms of their arms uh, like offset wise um, pretty much all of them angle into the gun like towards the the right of the receiver but some of them do come straight up from where they mount like this PKS and then there's some models like the PKA Venezuelan model, um, which does it, and this Rackers model, which do it to the extreme. They actually fully extend into what would be the center axis of, a, of an AK platform rifle. So the optic reticle is pretty much directly over the bore axis. Um, and then the PKA Venezuelan model, interestingly enough, uh, sits low enough to the receiver, the dust cover, that actually allows co-witness as well. So you can see the irons through the field of view of the optic. This Rackers mount does not sit low, it does not put the optic low enough to allow co-witness, but it, um, it does sit extremely low. Reticle wise, just like the Western counterparts, you can get these things in every single configuration you can practically think of. When you get into the POSPs and the PO optics and the PSOs, uh, a lot of them, it's very, for a lot of them, it's very common for them to have a chevron based kind of complex reticle with a built in optical range finder on them. So you will see a, a, in one portion of the reticle, there will be what looks like a little graph thing with a curve on it. And that is an optical range finder. And it's basically designed so you put the base of a target on the flat bar at the bottom and then wherever the top of the target meets, mates up with the curve, that um, g gives you the range of, the rough range of the, the target indicated above in meters, hundreds of meters. So there's generally two different versions of that range finder out there. Um, one is rumored to be military and one is rumored to be hunting. And that's simply based on the height that the target is calibrated for. So you'll see a lot of optics will have 1.7 written next to them in their range finder. So that means that it's calibrated for an object that's 1.7 meters high, which generally is pretty much a good average height for a human being. So those are mostly considered to be the military range finders, range finding reticles. Then there's other versions out there like what I have here that have a target of 1.5 meters. Now I think if you convert 1.5 meters to feet, that works out to kind of a shorter human being, like almost, it doesn't seem quite like the right height for something like that. So there's been rumors that I've read online. I haven't really found any conclusive evidence of either or for when it comes to this theory, but uh, there's rumors that that's actually more of a hunting reticle. So that 1.5 meters, if you include antlers on a, on a typical deer, that is about appropriate for a height of a deer. And that would make sense that that's why you see it on a lot of their civilian models, like this PO 3 to 9 up here. That's what it's built for civilians, civilians hunt, so therefore the rangefinder works for a deer, a 1.5 meter high deer. Uh, a lot of these optics also include illumination, which is a pretty neat feature. The POSPs and the PSOs and the POs usually have illuminated optics, so the whole reticle, or illuminated reticle, so the whole reticle lights up in different colors, depending on what LEDs installed or what bulbs installed. Some are green, some are red, um, and they're usually actuated by a little rubber toggle switch that is on the side of the, built into the arm here. Um, 
and then some optics it's different it's like a twist dial somewhere on it like you'd see on like a, a lot of common western red dots this rackers optic actually has a tritium insert in it so this thing has a radioactive piece of material in it that would uh, illuminate the optic uh, all the time until the radioactive material decays away so some of these optics you buy will have that radioactive thing in it still good and the optic will always be illuminated in this case this rackers mount that i have or optic i have is old enough that the the half the tritium inside it's worn out so it no longer glows turret wise um, some of the turrets there's a lot of deviations in them some of the turrets are exposed like on POSP models they tend to be exposed um, on PSOs and PO optics they tend to have these nice little rubber caps over them to keep them kind of protected um, a lot of the fancy reticles on POSPs and PSOs and POs they have the BDC built into the turrets for a particular caliber so you can click the turret the elevation to like four on the indicators and that means that it's compensating for 400 meters of bullet drop i mean like a 400 meter bullet drop on the whatever round it's calibrated for and then uh some optics don't do that for the illuminated optics uh the batteries also vary there's also a variation in the batteries um, a lot of these like this posp here you can see it has a little compartment for a watch battery of some sort um, and then some of the other Optics like these POs uh, have been retrofitted with a special cap on them so they can take double A's. But generally they're pretty common. You can get them at most battery stores, dedicated battery stores in North America. And if not, at like a Walmart or something. You can see that some of these optics also come with eyepieces. Now there's a lot of, there's a huge misconception um, out there. A lot of people see these optics with these eyepieces these rubber eyepieces, and they, they think that they're solids. They'll see somebody looking through the scope and they'll comment right away, oh, you're gonna get scoped by that thing, like the gun's gonna shoot, the recoil's gonna jab the scope in your eye. Um, that is not the case. As you can see on this three to nine here, it has a rubber eyepiece, and a good two thirds of it is actually just hollow rubber. Uh, and it totally, it's totally flexible, so it does not jab your eye. And these are optional. The, some of the optics come with them and some of them don't. You don't have to run the optics with those on them. You can pull them off like this POSP down here. I pulled it off. Um, some of these optics are first focal plane and other ones are not. So typically I've noticed that your POSPs, your PSOs and your PO's tend to be first focal plane optics. So when you adjust the eye, when you adjust the reticles in them, the reticle moves inside the tube, not the field of view. So if you buzz the turret, the windage turret, all the way to max one direction, you will notice your reticle, your chevron, your aiming point is literally crammed to one side of your field of view, your, tu your the tube. Some of these optics also come with some sun shades. Um, some of them are kind of permanently built in, other ones are adjustable, and some of them need to be threaded on. So like this PKA, for instance, it has a slightly recessed objective and then it has exposed threads so you can screw in the provided uh, sunshade onto it. Uh, models like this POSP also have a recessed, a slightly recessed objective lens. And then once you have to purchase the extent, the sunshade of uh, third party. Um, some optics like PSOs and this PO have the sunshade adjustable and it's built into the design. So I can actually twist this. I got it fully extended right now for cosmetic reasons. And it is handy to just have it always engaged. But you can see there, it contracts in quite a ways or I can extend it out a long ways too. And then some optics like this PKA-S um, just don't have it, I believe. And same goes for this Rackers mount. They don't really have much. They have a slight hood, but that's it. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna show you how to do basic installation for these two different types of uh, bases or clamps. So we'll start off with the rackers, um, this particular clamp first, because it's a little bit more complex than the other one I'll show you. Um, so right now I got it, presumably say out of the box you get it and it's just too loose on your rail, right? There's a chance that when you get it out of the box it might come too tight. It'll be the same process, except you won't have it on here like this, like I do. Um, so you can see it's way too loose. It's when I turn the clamp around, lock it in place not even close so I'm gonna have to tighten it up 
So to adjust this type of bottom clamp, you're gonna need probably two different flathead screwdrivers. The little one I'm gonna use to pry up this plate on the bottom. So you can see I just lift it up because it has that detent right there. Use this to lift it up so you can get the freely pivot out of that. And then you can do the rest by hand. So there, I push it off to the side and that allows you to pivot it down and over the head of that screw. Now, how this particular clamp works is there's a threaded, the screw is basically just protruding through the hole in this bottom dovetail section here. And all it does is when you actuate this cam around, you're just sucking that screw in and that's pushing, that's prying down this, this dovetail section to basically sandwich the, the rail. So it's a pretty primitive, basic design. Um, so obviously to take up slack, that means you just gotta preload it a bit. So you can either use a big flathead screwdriver to on the head of this, but I notice on this model that cut isn't done very good. It's very shallow. Or you can just use this star thing as a wrench to kind of just ratchet around. I was going the wrong way with it. Okay. Uh, we'll try there. So I thread it, you basically just twist it the right way to make it clamp more. Um, to test it, I believe I have to install it like so which is a little bit tedious. Okay, I'm not gonna, I don't think I quite necessarily need to pivot that back in. I might need to. Okay, let's see how she is. It's just a trial and error kind of process. So that's way too much. Um, how much torque you apply on these throw levers, I haven't found any solid information indicating how much, how to really measure it. But I would say, um, basically it should be something you can do with a finger comfortably all the way around. And then the last bit where you have to lock it behind a bar, um, then that sh that's usually a kind of a two finger, a thumb affair. So that's too much. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. There you go, so I got the spring plate in there, and I'm, I'm judging already by the torque that I got it about right. It's a little tight for an airsoft gun, but in real life, for real AK, you probably want, want it about this much to keep it definitely solid. That's the nice thing about airsoft, you don't have to stress about these things. <laughs> Being so proper. There you go, so that's that installed. All right, so now we'll move on to the other clamping method that I have here, uh, the, just your typical SVD mount. So you can see, once again, like the AK, I got it very loose on the gun, so we're gonna take up that slack. So, of course, you uncam it so it's relaxed and you can pull it off. And this system is way nicer, in my opinion. It's, it's totally tool-free, as far as I've discovered. Like, I've never had to use a tool for this. But you can see right here, you won't see in the picture because it moves ever so slightly, but that's bright silver piece here is the cam that moves up and down on the threaded bolt that's manipulated by the lever. And it moves in like just like 10 thou when you do a swing like that, like it's not much. It moves whatever the th pitch of the, the screw is, half the pitch. Um, so to, and then it has this locking uh, nut on the top. So just like the other mount, how you take up for slack is you simply just preload this cam further in before you start moving the lever. So if the lever all the way loose, you reach in with your thumb, I find, this is how I do it, you reach in with your thumb and you kind of push that cam down. You might have to jiggle a bit because it could be a little sticky and you pull it totally away from this upper thing like this. Now you're gonna go ahead and thread this in just by guess, like however far you think it needs to go and then you gotta let it back up. And there's a chance sometimes it won't pop all the way in. 
it might be. Let me get in a position like that. Uh, there, like that. See how it's not fully seated? We'll have a better f shot shot of it later, probably. But um, if it gets like that, you want to just kind of fiddle with it a bit, tweak it a little bit, shift it around until you can get the pop in and seat properly. Yeah, uh, it's this usually this is harder for me to do because I'm showing you guys in a video, but in real life it's it's very simple. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so just by oh, oh never mind. Sometimes you can tell before you even get it on there that's too tight because you won't even it'll start to bind really good and you won't even get the slide onto the dovetail. In this case it does. Okay, it's super close there. So I got most of the way, it's not fully locked, and you can see the optic has no shift. But because this is a real gun and not an airsoft gun, I'm gonna do it a little tighter than that, because you can see it's it's effortless. It should, in my opinion, be a little tighter than that. So now you gotta be a little bit more precise about how you manipulate this. You wanna push it down without moving the top bolt. You just crank it in like maybe one cam. There. Give her a shot. Slides on nice and easy. Make sure you're seated up against the little recoil lug and go ahead and push this around. That's, that's pretty stiff. I think to reduce stress on the, the, the mount, I might not run it that stiff. I'll back it off. I might have done two lugs there. So I can get the pop in one more time. I might have no choice. That might be the adjustment right there. That might, I might not be able to let it off a little bit. This might be too loose, we'll see. Uh, it might be back where we were before I adjusted it last, but I don't know. That's better than having it too tight in my opinion, actually. So I'm gonna run with that. Now, the final uh, installation uh, thing you may wanna consider, but it won't come up for you lucky Americans that have PSLs. Um, drag knobs and AKs and all that. But for us Canadians that are mostly using <laughs> uh, older style guns that have very open ejection ports on the top, when you install an optic like this, you may want to in consider installing a shell deflector as well because the casings can come up and even though the mounts are off to the left, since some cases, depending on the mount you buy, the optic you buy, uh, they can strike your, your optic. Woo. I'm going to pull this off and show you this particular shell deflector that I like to use. Uh, this I buy from a place in Czech Republic called um, VZ58rifle.com or something like that. I'm not sure if it's still around anymore. I haven't bought from them in a while. But see if you could if you could source out something like this. These are great. Now they bolt onto the optic itself in a way that doesn't interfere with it. Um, and yeah, you can see how it acts as a shell deflector. Uh, I find for most of these, they have to be dremeled a bit to get them to seat in the arm properly. But uh, it, it beats buying a cheap, uh, worse design model, and it definitely beats making your own. So I still like, despite having to do modifications to get the fit, I still prefer to buy these ones. That's what it's called online, if you can find one. POS Shell Deflector. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to briefly touch on sight adjustment for these things. Um, I'm not going to go into too, into too much detail or demonstrating things because I, I feel like that almost should be done in a separate video. And there's already some YouTube videos out there explaining this. Um, but for the POSP models, uh, they tend to have a turret that looks exactly like this. POSPs, PSOs, PO optics, they all kind of look like this. How you adjust these is you can just buzz them. Um, the turrets to whatever position it needs to be in. And then what you'll want to do, uh, or if you want finer increments, either way, at some point, you're going to have to loosen off these two silver screws you see on the top. Uh, some cases, you might have to take them right out. I find in all mine, you just loosen them enough that you can get the two halves to pivot independently of each other. So you know you got it right if you can spin twist this top black portion of the, the turret without moving the bottom one or vice versa. You know you got them loose enough then. Um, so you can spin the turret whatever direction you need to do to get your your 
gun zeroed. And then when you're done, you can carefully, without moving the top of this black piece, the black portion of the turret, you can set your, if you have a BDC turret like this, um, I think it's generally intended. I know on my guns, I have it set so I zero my guns at 100 meters. So I will, before I'm done and put this, tighten up the screws again, I will hold this so it doesn't move and I will spin the silver part of the turret till the one dash is lined up with the dash on the, the body of the optic. So that tells me it's, you know, it's sitting at the 100 meter mark. And then once that's done, I will torque these, I'll screw these little silver screws in till they're snug. Don't over torque these because it's very fine threads into what could possibly be like alloyed metal. Like, uh, you know, don't basically don't over torque them. You might wreck things that are hard to replace. A lot of the other optics are a lot more conventional to what us Westerners know. Uh, it's just a spin off the turret cap and you just got to die on. You just, it usually clicks. I don't know what increments the Russians tend to use for their adjustments. Um, by the way, you just twist these dials until you get your zero and then you leave it be and you just put your cap back on. It gets a little bit more complex for very particular optic models like this PKS. Uh, it's strange in many ways. Uh, you use a special tool and you, un you undo uh, certain parts of it to sh allow it to shift certain ways and things like that. It gets more complex, but it's, it's generally pretty intuitive. I figured it out without any instructions, so I'm sure a lot of people can. Alright, so now the final part of the video, I'm just going to give you some um, various information sources and also mention a few places where you can buy things like this. So a great place to find more information on this whole opt side mount optic system and very excellent reviews on various optics. I use this website all the time. It's a very well laid out website um, with excellent credible information and that is RussianOptics.net. Uh, I pretty much anytime I have a question about one of these optics or I'm looking at buying a new one, I, I look up that website and I read the guy's entire review of it because it's excellent. And then the final thing I would recommend is YouTube, which you've already discovered clearly. Um, there isn't that many videos, but occasionally you can at least see a half-assed video of a particular optic you're wanting to buy and maybe at least it'll give you better visuals of the optic so you can confirm it has the clamp or the the, the particular arm or something that you need to work with your setup, right? Now, as for places to buy these things, here in Canada, we have very limited options, sadly, because a lot of stuff cannot come up from the States uh, be, due to their export regulations. So in Canada, some sources that I have um, is westrifle.ca. I've bought lots of things from them and eastwave.com. I think it's .com, it might be .ca. But those are two Canadian-based companies that do they carry other things but then they also carry side mount optics so both of my mpz scopes my uh, three to nine that you see here and my six by 36 that's on my drognov clone that's not in this video um uh, i bought from them and and on top of that the mpz's uh came with what they sold it came with the little the malot rails that you see matt attached to my uh, SKS right now. So that's kind of an added bonus because it's like an $80 mount that comes with for free. So that was cool. Uh, another source here in Canada is Amazon. There is some things you can get off Amazon. And then another big one is eBay. For you Americans, you guys like a lot of things have just an absolute wash of uh, options. Like <laughs> all sorts of places you can buy optics from. The big one that definitely stands out though in the United States is Kalinka Optics. Uh, they seem to have a really well laid out website, how-tos, um, a lot of information and other accessories, parts, 
and definitely a huge selection of side mount optics. So I definitely invite you Americans to check out Kalinka Optics for your side mount needs. And there's a slight chance, I've heard rumors sometimes that they might be able to sell to Canadians, ship up here, I'm not sure. Uh, somebody will have to confirm that in the comments below. Well, I hope you found this video very helpful and I wish you luck on your future side mount purchase. Thanks for watching. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, which one do I want to use? I'll go for a real one. <laughs>